Welcome back everyone, this is Flo754 with the third part of my Saints Row 4 modding tutorial series. This video is going to show you how you can take your model out of whatever 3D software you use to create it and make it export ready in Maya 3D. So first of all, I'm going to create a new folder in our mod folder and call it something like 3D export stuff. Right away, let's add our custom model's textures to this folder. As you can see, I only prepared a diffuse and a normal map, which I'll show you in Photoshop so you can get an idea about how they should look. Here's the diffuse texture, it's really basic really, nothing special about it. And that's the normal texture. Obviously this one is inverted, so it's not blue like a regular normal map. That's because I found normal maps sometimes end up looking weird in game, as if they were having the opposite of the usual effect. Inverting them fixed that issue, so yeah, keep that in mind. Before we get to Maya, Rename your textures according to Saints Row 4's naming conventions. Generally speaking, you want your files to have the same base name with a specific suffix depending on the texture type. For diffuse maps, add underscore D. For normal maps, add underscore N. Refer to the list on the left side of the screen for other texture suffixes. Also note that your textures have to be saved as Targa files. That means they should have the TGA extension, in case you don't know. Now, let me just copy this Maya scene from the converter folder and paste it right here. This is the male character template file, which we'll use as a starting point for finishing up our 3D assets. I'll show you its contents real quick. As you can see, this scene contains the male player character from Sensor 4, without any clothes or hair. And we can use this model here to view all the morph targets that allow for Sensor's in-depth character customization. You'll notice that this list is pretty long though, so instead of telling you what each one of the sliders does, I'll go over them in clusters. Arguably the most important group, the body customization morphs, is located right here, in the middle of the scroll window. It's comprised of five sliders, which single-handedly manage the shape of the overall body. Two of those sliders, body gender male and body gender female, are never used in game, so it all comes down to the big three. Body fit plus, body fit minus, and body muscle. Those are the only morph targets that you have to create for your custom clothing item if it doesn't cover parts of the skull or face. Everything beneath the body customization morphs belongs to the group of facial customization morphs, and everything above the body customization morphs are facial animation morphs. I recommend you read the SDKB tutorial thread on scenesfromods.com for more information on the different morph targets, links in the description. On a different note, you certainly notice that the character is kinda lying flat on the ground, rather than standing upright. That's because it was modeled in a Z-up coordinate system. A simple way to fix this is to click Window, Settings Preferences, Preferences Settings, and specify Z as the up axis. Hit Save. That fixed the issue, but created a new one in the process. Now the viewport navigation is messed up, the controls are all wonky. However, simply restarting me, I should deal with this. Okay, so now we can get to work. Open the Outliner if it hasn't already popped up, and import your custom models by dragging and dropping them as an FBX over to Maya. And that did it. As you can see, this new group appeared and it currently holds all of my shapes. You might ask yourselves where exactly the shapes are in the viewport. Well, they are up here, and they are way too big. Apparently exporting them from Blender kinda messed up the scales. So we will have to scale them down shortly, but for now, let's just change the names in the outliner. Luckily, they are already named somewhat descriptively, but we have to make sure that the names match up exactly with those of the corresponding morph targets in the character's morpher tab. So, you can see the shapes should actually be called Body Fat Plus, Body Fat Minus, and Body Muscle. The base shape, which is in my case called the Best Male, you have to name exactly like you named your item in the first tutorial, but add CM underscore, since we're currently working on the male character's model, and there's a separate model for a female character. That's also why we don't need the female mesh for now, but it will be good to have later on, when you repeat this whole process with the female template file. For now we can delete it though. Alright, now that the names are correct, we can work on the transformations. As of now, the scales are set to 100, which is obviously too much. In the past, values of 9.6 worked pretty well, so I'm going to assign that to all axes on all of my models right now. Also, I'll adjust the translation values to so line up with the body mesh. At this point, you should double check if the pivot points of all your models are set to the center of the coordinate system. This has to be the case, otherwise you will experience transformation issues once you view your model in game. If a pivot point is not at the center of the grid, say it's up here, you can hit insert and while holding the X key, 
drag it to the center of the viewport. Holding X simply ensures the pivot snaps to fixed points on the grid. Then let loose of the X key and hit insert again to complete the transformation of the pivot. Next we need to make sure our models have uniform scale, translation and rotation values. So with all of my shapes selected, I just right click freeze all in the channel editor. That did it. We're very close to actually assigning the morph targets we made as blend shapes to our base model, but before we do that, let's go to the menu bar and hit edit delete all by type non-deformer history. Select all shapes with the base model added to the selection last. Click create deformers blend shape with these settings. Now you have your morph sliders in the attribute editor under the blend shape tab. Since we don't need to see the morph targets anymore, simply hide them by writing off in their visibility channels. Don't delete them though, or else the converter might have problems importing them later on. Okay, next up is rigging. In order to create a preliminary skin cluster, select your clothing item, then the root bone by holding Ctrl and clicking Bone Root. Then click Skin, Bind Skin, Smooth Bind with these settings. That already did something. If we rotate a bone now, we can see that the clothing item deforms along with the player character model. But if you look at the vertex weights and compare them with those of the original character, you'll notice that the weights are distributed very differently. An effective way to fix that is sort of baking the vertex weights from the player character onto your custom model. With that, select the player character, then your clothing item and hit skin, edit smooth skin, copy skin weights. So now if you look at your clothing item in the vertex paint view, you'll notice some much cleaner vertex weights. And honestly, that's already a pretty good skin, so I won't make any other changes. If you too are done rigging, you can go on to assign a material to your model. Click Window, Rendering Editors, and go to Hypershade. At this point, I'll delete this material here. It carried over from Blender, and I don't need it anymore. Now create a new form material, and add a Diffuse and Normal Map to it. Look at this chart to see which mayor slot corresponds to which texture type in Saints Row 4. As you can see, for the Diffuse Map, we need to click this checkered icon next to Color. Select File, and specify the path to your Diffuse Targo. Whenever you want to clean up your work area a little, right-click the Materials icon and drag down to the Graph Network option. This will rearrange the nodes. Go to your Fung's Attributes again, and click the checkered icon next to Bump Mapping for a normal map. Select File, and specify the path to your normal Targo. Finally, select your clothing item in the Outliner, and assign your new material to the model by right-clicking its icon and dragging up to the Assign Material to Selection option. If you enable textures in the viewport now, you can preview your material. Well, it looks okay, but I assure you, it will look a lot better in-game. Before exporting our model, we need to do one more thing, and that's deleting the player character's body. That's because having this huge mesh in our FBX would greatly increase the file size, which would slow down the importing process in the converter quite a bit. In fact, I tried to leave it in once, which led to the converter parsing the file for 90 minutes straight. Now we can save the scene and export our item by clicking File, Export All. Select FBX Export in the drop-down menu and go to the same folder your textures are stored in. In my case, it's called 3D Export Stuff. It's actually very important that all your assets are in the same folder, so keep that in mind. Make sure your export settings look exactly like mine. I'll scroll down very slowly, so that you can pause the video and copy them one by one. Also let me stress that these unit settings here are particularly important. Uncheck Automatic, select centimeters in the drop-down menu, and make sure your up axis is set to Y, even though we set it to Z in the preferences. I admit that's a little confusing, but setting the up axis to Y in the export settings will guarantee that your model's rotations are preserved, whereas choosing Z here would rotate your model by 90 degrees on the X axis, Alright, now I'll name the file in a descriptive way, for example, uh, mod example underscore export ready, and hit enter to save it. In the next tutorial, we're going to take the FBX we created right now and export it with the first SDK B release. Until then, happy modeling!